In this video, we're going to introduce the various concepts that we'll be discussing throughout this short course on copulas. The prerequisites for this course are a basic understanding of probability theory, statistics, and information theory. Don't worry if it's been a while since you've last seen these topics. I'll try to review them in more detail before I use them, and I'll provide links to further reading in the notes below. So let's dive right in. What are copulas and why are they useful? If you look up copulas on Wikipedia, you come across these complicated mathematical formulas, such as these below. And this can be a little bit daunting. I want to back up and begin with a motivation for why someone might want to use copulas. Don't worry, we'll eventually go through all of these details and hopefully gain a better understanding and appreciation for copulas at the end of this short course. Suppose that we'd like to understand the relationship between two series of data. Let's call them A and B. The series of data could be related to finance, such as stocks data, or it could be climate-related data, such as rainfall in different regions of the world. There are several ways to go about this, but I'll list three of them here. Um, we can use a scatter plot. So here, what I've done is, in my Jupyter Notebook, I've downloaded stock data for Apple and ExxonMobil for the entire year of 2021. I delete the data that doesn't exist, and then I compute a first order difference on this data. So although this isn't quite related to what we're doing, um, stock data is often non-stationary, and we'd like to make data stationary before we analyze it in a static way. And so that's what this is doing, but that's a detail for later. So let's, this is the returns data for Apple, the daily returns data for Apple, and this is their daily returns data for ExxonMobil. So now let's put this on a scatter plot. You can see here in this cell that I've plotted the daily returns of Apple versus the daily returns of ExxonMobil. Scatter plots are nice because they allow us to instantly visualize the data and see if there's any relationship between them. Um, we can even compute metrics on top of this, such as a correlation coefficient. But often, looking at an image like this, it's really hard for us to determine if there's any sort of real underlying relationship or not. And that's often what we're interested in when we're comparing series of data. A second approach is we can build a predictive model, such as a regression model. And that's what I've done here. Here, uh, I show a linear regression model where X models the daily returns of Apple and Y models the daily returns of ExxonMobil. And we can see that the regression is computed uh, according to this formula at the top right of this plot. And so what this allows us to do is to say, given a value of daily returns for Apple, we can predict the daily return for ExxonMobil. Now, you can see that according to this line, we're going to be pretty far off from any sort of good predictions from this model. And Part of the reason for that is that it is a linear model. So we have, it's a very simple model and it's not gonna be able to capture all of the complicated dynamics of the data. We could also build a probabilistic model, which is a little bit more complicated, but potentially more useful for two reasons. One, it allows you more expressive power. And two, it allows us to have some sort of confidence associated with our predictions. And these confidence this is often represented as probabilities, can be used in order to assess risk. And risk is really important when you're trying to make decisions on financial data, for example. So probabilistic models are very important. And that's kind of the basis of this course is we want to build high fidelity probabilistic models. What I'm showing here is some of you may be familiar with it. We'll get into the details later on in this course, but this is a multivariate Gaussian distribution. And I've used that model and I've built the parameters for that model and overlaid it on top of the data. And what you can see here is that it captures a good amount of the data. Um, so given a certain prediction, it, it will do a better job than linear regression. And it may or may not be sufficient for this data set. Give, depending on what you're trying to model and what you're trying to use your model for. But let me show you a different data set now. This is a wine data set where it has various characteristics of wine. And what I've extracted is the flavonoids and the color intensity of the wine. And when I plot them in a scatter plot, I see this sort of U or banana relationship. 
Um, now, if I use my multivariate Gaussian model again, which is a linear probabilistic model, linear in the sense that it captures linear dependence, and we'll go through these in more detail later, um, you can see that it doesn't do a very good job of making, of being a high fidelity expression of the underlying data. And that's what this course is really going to be about, is how can we build more expressive models, probabilistic models, to model these sorts of phenomenon that occur in the real world. So I hope that gets you excited to learn more about copulas and copula modeling. And I'll see you in the next video.